I use it a lot in my uh, UK restaurants and also likewise in, in Dubai. Uh, not that I'm trying to promote them, but they're fabulous. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I do hope I see you all there soon. <laughs> but that's what it's about, isn't it? This is like one big happy family in this industry. That's what I love about it. You're going to work with so many other great chefs, and there's plenty of great chefs around the world, and I'm glad to say I'm working with some here during this trip, which is fabulous. Now, this is lovely. So I want to really now just slow that down a little bit over there, slightly cooler there. Just let that continue to cook, and then I'll be transferring that to a pan and again finishing that with butter. Right, let's take out our fish. Thank you very much, Chef. Because this now is telling me that it's still going to be lovely and pink in the center. Really quite delightful to eat. I'm not going to stop there and waste all that butter because there's too much flavor there. Just do that little trickle on top. And now we're going to present this very first dish. Okay, so I have a really nice plate for this here. Let's just let that relax. Now, we've got, of course, as you will know, the fennel salad here. I've got a touch more of that dressing, just to drizzle. And this is the simplicity of this dish. It's really about putting two great flavors side by side. And that is exactly what I'm going to do with this. So let's just do a nice little line with this salad. Just simple. It's slightly more lively. There we are. And I'll just wipe that over in a second. But you've got then just a simple little salad on the plate. It's going to be delightful to eat. Just have a little bit of that olive in here. That's lovely. Nice little contrast. And then we have one of these papers. Just to clean up here. Then we have our lovely uh, salmon. Uh, I think we can put this really beautiful piece of salmon here, just sitting next to it, and lovely and pink in the center. So we have got this nice little double act of the two. I should be presenting it in front of you any moment now. We also have some nice little, uh, these are just rocket leaves. You know, these, these things really, this is where, whenever I write a recipe, I do it there as a guideline. You can put then your own style into it. So I always keep the recipes really quite simple, quite basic, particularly if I'm writing, you know, any books or what have you. I like to keep them really, really quite simple. So consequently, you know, it's up to then you, the guest, the reader, to actually decide, well, actually, you know, I prefer one with a little touch of this or that, and just have that freedom, because that's what the stove is all about. It is about having your own personality and, and style and freedom in your own cooking. Let's just put one more of these. And now, remember that dressing we made to begin with. I'm going to put a touch more of it into that just to re enhance. And we've got the lemon, we've got the sweet lemon dressing, which is the sugar, the lemon juice, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And we're just going to do a nice little drizzle. A few little dots around the plate, like this. A little touch just dripping over that fish. And there you have a very, very, you saw how easy that was. Such a simple dish. Let me present that here. And there is the starter. The lock fine salmon with a little fennel, olive and tomato salad. Thank you. Right, next, what are we going to cook for you now? Well, this chicken dish, as you can see, the grilled chicken. Something else that I made, mm, tasting lovely already. Let's just speed that up a little bit more now. And now what I've actually made for this, I've made a base sauce to it, which is a cream sauce, just a chicken cream sauce, made with onions in here, a little touch of white wine, which I'm allowed to reduce, just increase this heat. A little bit of white wine, which I'll reduce until it's almost dry, so I can really take on that extra flavor of the white wine. Into that then chicken stock, that again was boiled and reduced to really enrich its flavor even more, and a splash or two of cream, and I really no more than a splash or two of cream. Something else we're going to be adding to this, let me just 
turn this up a bit again. Something else I'm going to be adding to this is just these little sticks of vegetables. Now, when I'm back in the UK, and I you know, still have a restaurant there, and the restaurant that we have there, and likewise at the home I still have there, we love actually growing a lot of our own vegetables. We absolutely love it. And again, that changes throughout the seasons. And these things here, you've got some wonderful celeriac. So this time of the year, perfect, will last you right away until next, um, till the end of uh, spring. The carrots, of course, quite a classic really. And even down to a little courgette. So I wanted to add something that's got a little bit more freshness about it, because we've got that little earthiness, we've got a natural sweetness coming from the carrot. And here you've got something that just gives you that lighter flavor, but it is lovely and fresh to eat. Something else you can add, but it's a, really just a supplement, is some nice little baby spinach leaves. These are lovely, still around at the moment, and not just farm ones, you can still get some nice young uh, spinach, but generally you're gonna find this is going to start hitting your actual garden in about that uh, spring time, which is delicious as well. Absolutely wonderful. Right, so this is the base sauce that I made. Let me just have a little taste. And before you know it, we'll be presenting you the next dish. Mm. That is quite delightful. And all I'm going to do now, these have been very quickly blanched incidentally. These were basically just into, again, that boiling sort of salted water. Not for long at all, still making sure they've got that little robust kind of crispness to them. And these you can cut just on one of those mandolins, which you know we can get just in every supermarket these days, which is really quite simple. And now just stirring them around into that sauce. Just to coat, we need a touch more of that carrot, which has got that lovely, as I said, that sweet bite about it, which I love. And at the last minute, as soon as that gets a little touch warmer, in with the courgette, because I don't want that to discard. Something else this is going to, this is one of the most versatile, uh, um, versatile ingredients within the kitchen is of course the lemon. I don't want to make a lemon sauce, but you'll be amazed at just one little squeeze. That was to make a proper lemon dressing. This is purely to lift and enhance, and that's what I love about it. I'm often asked, which is the most important, or one ingredient you'd hate to be without in a kitchen, and it is the lemon, because it works with sweet, savory, as just a lifter, or something that's got a total flow of flavor of its own, so just a little squeeze like that. We can still increase this heat just a touch. Get this nice and hot now. And this one is not far off. Look at that. Let's just do that once more. And we're almost there. Such more heat happening in this. And then we'll finish it up. I am going to add a few of these little leaves. And notice they're going in as they are. I want them to wilt. I don't want to fry them. I don't want to add excess fat content when I don't need to. So again, these, as this just heats up, will begin to wilt and soften, and you'll have then that little bit of baby spinach. You've got the vegetables. And do you know what I thought I would do with this dish? Because this is really about one of those kind of holy dishes you want to make, because you're getting these things from your own garden. But I thought, here I am, in the Far East, so I thought I'd make a little dressing, and I've made a dressing here, which is just simply honey. I've also taken a little bit of stem ginger. Now we know the stem ginger, of course, is, is ginger that is cooked within the syrup. I've taken a little touch of that syrup as well, mixed with honey. Into that, there is lime juice. There is also uh, sesame oil, red chili, and as you can see, all of these flavors really nicely coming together. And I did a nice little dice of that uh, stem ginger as well. Another flavor I intend to add to that, and this is really starting to warm now. Another flavor that I wanted to add to that was, of course, coriander. So we're going to add a little touch of that. And because I've also got that um, sesame oil into it, I thought we'd put a few little toasted sesame seeds just across the finished dish as well. It's amazing what a contrast this creates and how well it works together. So again, just gently cutting through this coriander. Let's not crush it. Let's just cut it. And I wanted to share that flavor. I do love the flavor of that coriander. 
happening in a dressing like this. That's lovely. So, and again, I'm keeping it quite coarse. I don't want it super fine. Why fine, you know? Because you won't get that fullness of flavour. I'll pop that in at the very last second. This is almost there. I need to get a bit more heat in it. And then before you know it, the dessert will be presented to you very quickly and you've got then a lovely dessert still to eat. And I know the chef has actually made an Eaton mess. Now that is one of my favourites, you know, great old Eaton mess the chef has made. And I know he'll be looking forward to uh, sharing that dish with you. And he's probably thinking right now, hurry up bro, let's get on with it. Can you blame you know. Listen, this is what I love doing. You know, I could be here all night explaining to you about that. And if anybody's got any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. You know, it's not a problem. I'm happy to answer. Let me have another little taste. Please carry. I'll speak to Alison. <laughs> I'm going to hand over to Alison about the recipes. We have, we have to discuss that. Have we sent an email. <laughs> that's a great thing. When you see the recipes, you'll realise just how simple and easy they are. And that's the beauty of it. They really are. Okay, we're ready to go. So they're all in Gary's three six five cookery book. Really? I'm sure you can buy on Amazon. <laughs> you certainly can. <laughs> how long does it take to prep all the ingredients? Well, I think, as I said to you, when you look at the uh, the vegetables, you know, for instance, for the, the chicken dish. Um, for that alone, you know, you're, those on a mandolin take seconds. They really are very, very quick. And also, as, you know, as I mentioned, blanching them, you can have all of this done well in advance. The sauce took no time to make, it's just waiting for those reductions. So, it's a question if you're going to be having a dinner party or some friends, your base sauce, as you saw, I've done is made, those you've got blanched off, and it's simple finishing. The only thing you really have to cook at the very end is, is the chicken, everything else is purely. Uh, purely and simply as a, as a warming process and just a finishing process and I think we're ready to go. So we've got the spinach, let me get the bowl I want to sit this in. And again, this is the simplest, simplest of, uh, of recipes. I just want to take a little bit of butter and just allow that to brush. Sit that on top and that can just melt into it and get that nice little sizzle, that nice little nutty brown.